Hi, I'm Kelly. Have you ever come across times when you get particularly nervous? Say, during a presentation, you find it extra hard to speak smoothly. Or you can't help with stopping here and there, or adding fillers such as um, uh, a lot more than you normally do. Or keep revising your speech. If you have a kid, are there times when you're unsure whether they're stuttering or simply struggling with words due to limited language ability? Today, we'll give you an answer. I'm very happy to have Mr. Magdi Bagtia, Research Assistant Professor of the Hong Kong Polytechnic University to be here with us today. Hi Mehdi. Hi Kelly. I know it can be confusing to tell whether we're stuttering or not, especially how we all stop at times when we talk. So how do we differentiate between normal disfluency and stuttering? All of us will experience some moments of disfluency in our life in different circumstances, such as when we are speaking fast or when we are anxious, or exhausted, or when we are speaking a non-dominant language, or for a kid who just start to speak at a sentence level. However, the type and frequency of the stuttering in people who stutter are different from typically fluent speakers. In people who stutter, they tend to have more multiple units of uh, repetitions of single sounds and syllables. <laughs> And dystrophic phonations such as prolongations of the sound. And the stalks in the middle of the words in which the airflow would cease. I think some might think that children will naturally outgrow stuttering or they might think that bringing them to a speech therapist might simply heighten their awareness of their own stuttering. So some parents might be a little reluctant to bring their children to see a professional. So in your point of view, do you agree with early intervention or the otherwise? The research has shown that some of the children would outgo the stuttering naturally while others will end up with persistent stuttering. It is not completely clear yet how to differentiate between these two groups at early stages. However, there are some known risk factors that are related to the children with persistent stuttering, such as having a family history of stuttering, uh, presence of other speech language and phonological disorders, and having a negative reactions toward the stuttering. So I think it is necessary for the parents to have their children been examined by a professional speech pathologist so that they can verify the condition of their stuttering to consider the possibility of early intervention uh, because the research has shown that early interventions will bring more um, stable recovery versus treatment in adults. So how do speech therapists help people who stutters? Normally the speech therapists would adopt two different approaches for treatment of stuttering. The first approach is direct treatment in which uh, they will train the person to gain a control over their speech productions by monitoring their speech fluency or modifying their speech rate. The second approach will try to uh, focus on eliminating the factors that put pressure on demands on the speech production, such as uh, time pressure, environmental pressure, parental pressure, excitement, anxiety, and so on. Okay, thank you Mehdi for telling us so much on stuttering today. PolyU Speech Therapy Unit offers stuttering treatment programs in English and Cantonese to both children and adults in need. If stuttering is giving you a hard time, don't hesitate and seek help from professionals. Call us and book a session with our speech therapists.